Hello guys and welcome back to another video of SteadyRx. Um, as you can see, this is a little bit different. I'm actually in my living room. Okay, so what I'm going to go over tonight is pretty much pre-2Y12 inhibitors, which are antiplatelet medications. What you learn from these slides are a sprinkle of medicinal chemistry, pharmacology, uh, and within that it will be the mechanism of action, black box warning, and adverse reactions, and a few more things such as therapeutics. So the four medications for P2Y12 inhibitors are Clopidogrel, brand name Plavix, Prasugrel, brand name Effiant, Ticagrelor, brand name Berlinta, Cangrelor, brand name Cangrel. Alright, so I already mentioned that these medications are antiplatelet medications. They act as P2Y12 inhibitors. So that's pretty much their mechanism of action. They inhibit P2Y12 receptors. A few things that Clopidogrel and Prasugrel have in common are that they are prodrugs. Prodrugs are medications that after consumption they are metabolized into the active drug. Clopidogrel and Prasugrel also have a thionopyridine ring system. Prasugrel has a different halogen. Instead of the chlorine, it has a fluorine on it. Clopidogrel is going to go under site oxidation. Cytochrome P450 enzymes are primarily found in liver cells, but they are also located in the cells throughout the body. Within the cells, cytochrome P450 enzymes are located in the endoplasmic reticulum, which is a structure involved in protein processing and transport. Also, the mitochondria, which is the energy producing centers of cells. Oxidation occurs when the oxidation state of a molecule, atom or ion, is increased or in a simpler terms, when oxygen is added to a compound. So oxidation is when oxygen is added to a compound. So for Prasugrel, Prasugrel goes under hydrolysis. Hydrolysis means that it gets cleaved of chemical bonds via the addition of water. And this is usually a step towards the degradation of a substance. Remember that Clopidogrel and Prasugrel are irreversible inhibitors? Ticagrelor and Cangrelor are reversible inhibitors of the P2I12 receptors. So Ticagrelor is an analog of ATP. ATP molecules, which is adenosine triphosphate molecule, is a nucleotide known in biochemistry as the molecular currency of intracellular energy transfer. This means ATP is able to store and transport chemical energy within cells. Cangrelor has a purine center and a purine is a heterocyclic aromatic organic compound that consists of a pyrimidine ring fused to an imidazole ring. Just remember purines are water soluble. Also on Cangrelor it has a terminal phosphate group of a triphosphate. Out of the top 200 medications prescribed in the United States, Clopidogrel stands at number 40. Okay, black box warning for Clopidogrel is a diminished antiplatelet effect in patients with two loss of function alleles on the site 2C19 gene. So from what we know, Clopidogrel is a prodrug which gets converted by site 450 then go on to site 2C19. We have to remember that not 100% of the medication will be effective in the body. What makes it difficult is when a patient is a poor metabolizer of site 2 c 19 and in a poor metabolizer case, we will consider a different treatment. Other warnings include drug-to-drug -drug interactions with clopidogrel, so they are not recommended to be taken together. Select the serotonin reuptake inhibitors and NSAIDs may increase the bleeding risk. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as over-the-counter ibuprofen and naproxen. SSRIs are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and they are commonly used to help patients overcome depression. A few of these are citalopram, escitalopram, fluoxetine, and paroxetine. PPIs may decrease the efficacy of clopidogrel. A few of these medications are also found over the counter. These are omeprazole, esomeprazole, and lasoprazole. As a reminder, proton pump inhibitors are also called PPIs, and they reduce the production of acid by the stomach. They do this by irreversibly blocking the action of an enzyme responsible for acid production, which is the hydrogen potassium ATPase that is located in the parietal cells inside the stomach walls. Cyp 2 c 19 inhibitors decrease clopidogrel efficacy. Some of these may include voriconazole and ketoconazole. Adverse reactions for clopidogrel are risk of hemorrhage bleeding anywhere in the body, which is the loss of blood from a ruptured blood vessel, either internally or externally. In this case, internal. So there's going to be GI hemorrhage and intracranial bleeding for adverse reactions. So for dietary considerations, we must avoid grapefruit juice with this medication. Grapefruit juice will act as a competitive inhibitor of the CYP450 enzyme. Dosage typically consists of 75 milligrams and there are also 300 milligrams. 
These medications are used as secondary prevention. Secondary prevention medications like clopidogrel aim to reduce the impact of a disease or injury that has already occurred in the patient. This means that the medications like clopidogrel will prevent the development of the disease. Clopidogrel may be used in acute coronary syndrome situations. In unstable angina, non-ST segment elevation myocardial infarction, UAN STEMI, also referred to as NSTACS. According to the ACCAHA, a physician may start the patient on a dose higher than the maintenance dose. This is termed as a loading dose, and that's where 300 mg come into play. After that, the patient will be on a maintenance dose of 75 mg for one year along with aspirin, and this aspirin will be indefinite. Now for ST segment elevation myocardial infarction, STEMI, receiving fibrinolytic therapy in combination with aspirin and appropriate anticoagulant. 75 and under patients, the loading dose stays the same at 300 mg, but now the 75 mg dose can be as little as 2 weeks. For patients 75 and over, they have no loading dose and will be given just 75 mg 2 weeks up to 1 year. Patients that have had a recent myocardial infarction, a recent stroke, or established peripheral arterial disease may be able to take clopidogrel. All right, now I'll go on to the last three, prasugrel, ticagrelor, and cangrelor. For these three medications, just continue to think about hemorrhaging. So a black box warning is bleeding risk with all P2Y12 inhibitors, as I mentioned before. So for prasugrel, it's not recommended in patients 75 and over. Patients undergoing cabbage. Cabbage is defined as coronary artery bypass grafting. This is a type of surgery that improves blood flow to the heart. Surgeons use cabbage to treat people who have severe coronary heart disease. Coronary heart disease is usually due to a poor diet. And this is because plaque builds up in the coronary arteries. These arteries supply oxygen rich blood to our hearts. Additional risk factors for increased internal bleeding may include patients under 60 kilograms, warfarin, heparin, fibrinolytic therapy, long-term use of NSAIDs, which are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as over-the-counter ibuprofen and aproxen. These last three medications, prasugrel, ticagrelor, and cangrelor, may also be used as secondary prevention in acute coronary syndrome.